एस चांद प्रेजेंट्स एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम In this video, we will be learning about the basics of the casting process. This is the second part of the video, uh, basics of casting. In this part of the video, we will be learning about the molding process and different parts of the gating system. Welcome to S Chand Academy, and I am Anmol Bhatia. For detailed conceptual clarity, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. The link of the book is there in the description box below. So let's start with the topic metal casting process. And this is the second part of the video. If you haven't watched the first part of the same video, you can click the link in the description box. In the first part of the video, we have seen the process of making the pattern. Now in this part of the video, we will be learning about the mold and the core making process so firstly let us understand certain basic terms and terminologies there are three basic terms which are mold the process of molding and core making so what is a mold mold is basically a void or a cavity which is created on the sand with the help of a pattern so we have a sand and on the sand we have to uh, imprint or we have to place the pattern and when we remove that pattern we will get the cavity which is the replica and uh, whenever we pour the metal on the cavity we will get the final uh, outcome or the final product. Molding is a process of making that cavity or the mold uh, from the pattern and that cavity is made in the compact sand then we have core making process so core is what core is a kind of a body which is there inside that cavity when the metal is poured on the surface of that cavity that core will create a hollow in inside the metal which is being solidified so what happens whenever the casting is made hollow and the casting is having a cavity inside it. So let's say we want to make a cylinder which is hollow cylinder. So the we'll so we'll have a pattern of a cylinder which is there inside the sand. And when we pour in the metal, we'll get a solid cylinder. But I told you that we want a hollow cylinder. So in order to make that thing hollow, we have to place a core which is made up of sand inside that hollow cylindrical cavity. Whenever the metal is poured on the surface, that sand part will not allow the material to solidify. And when we break the mold and remove the internal core from there, we'll get the hollow uh, structure of that cylinder. So for that, this purpose, we have a sand shape uh, core, which is exactly similar to the cavity or the hole that is being produced. And that particular part is called as core. So core is placed inside the cavity in order to make that overall casting hollow. So what happens in the molding process? We have two uh, flasks, one the upper part and another is the lower part. So both of them uh, when combined together will create the complete flask. So here you can see that we have a parting line which is uh, there in between the two surfaces. The flask has two surfaces. The upper part is called as the cope and the lower part is called as a drag. So we have two surfaces and they these two surfaces are joined together with the help of the pins. So as you can see in the diagram that we have the upper part, we have the lower part and both the parts are joined together with the help of the pin and they are stuck together. Now in between uh, the surface we have to place the sand and that sand is compacted with the help of certain operations. So we have a sand which is of a required composition which is free from uh, moisture and we put in sand inside this and in between 
the sand we have to place a pattern and when we remove the pattern a cavity is created on the surface in order to have a clear picture let us have a cut section a cut sectional view of the same flask which is there uh, inside uh, which is produced with the help of the uh, pattern so here uh, this particular thing denotes the cut section so it has the upper part which is the cope this one and it has a lower part which is called as a drag and I have told you we have sand inside the cope and the drag. Uh, what happens here we have created a mold cavity. So here you can see that there is a mold cavity and in between the mold cavity we have placed a core and that core is also made with the help of sand. So here you can see that it is a cavity and inside the cavity there is a core which is placed. Now we want to pour in the material. So how can we do that? In order to pour in the material, we have this pouring basin. So pouring basin is a kind of cavity in which we will uh, pour the metal. It is a cup shaped arrangement in which we will be pouring the metal. The metal goes inside this uh, sprue. That sprue is a tapered shaped arrangement. So a sprue is there which is a tapered shaped arrangement and it is connected with a gate and a runner. So a gate is there that is connected with a runner and the material goes straight away inside this mold cavity. So we pour in the metal inside the sprue and there is a gate with the help of this connection it goes inside the mold cavity fills the mold entirely the extra material is uh, checked or comes out with the help of this riser. So there are two setups one is the sprue and another is the riser. You can see the shape of both of them. The shape of this part is tapered shape and the shape of this part is also tapered. There is a logic behind keeping this shape as a tapered one. So what is the situation you have a flask here inside the flask you will place the sand and a cavity is created with the help of pattern. The upper part of the flask is called as cope and the lower part is called as drag. Both are fitted to each other with the help of the pins so that there is no uh, mismatch between the two during solidification. So here we have a mold cavity and a pouring basin. From the pouring basin the metal is poured inside this with the help of a runner and the metal flows and from this riser the metal moves out. The video that you are seeing on the screen denotes the process of mold making. It has a box in which the sand is being placed and the person is cutting various cavities inside the sand so that the preparations of flowing the metal inside the cavity takes place. So this is the basic process of creation of the mold for a particular casting. In the previous clipping you have seen that the person was creating certain channels so that the metal flows easily on the surface of the cavity and we would easily uh, look at the uh, material that uh, it that is being filled entirely. So what is that process? So that process or that basic system is called as a gating system. Let's come to that gating system. In that gating system you can see that there is a cavity or the casting which is there and you have a pouring basin. It is I have told you that it is a cup shaped arrangement which is connected to a sprue and then you have a sprue base or a choke uh, which is which is there and ultimately is con it is connected to a runner. The runner is connected to in gates and the metal flows inside this casting. When this casting is filled the extra material is comes in this uh, particular channel that is called as a riser. So this particular arrangement or this particular setup is called as a gating system in which there are number of gates which are used to fill in the metal inside the hollow part uh, to create the final outcome or the final product. Now there are certain questions. Number one is the pouring basin. 
so pouring basin has a skimmer inside that would create any foreign material or any slag to enter into the surface so as to prevent any contamination of the final product then you have the shape the sprue which is a conical shape and you have a riser which is also a conical shape structure the question here uh, is why this is having a conical shape before that before answering to that question let us just look at the sprue and a riser so you can see both of uh, the sprue and the riser here uh, these two would be a cavity part and uh, that cavity is created with the help of these impressions that have been created with the help of uh, the wood. So here what happens inside that uh, cope and drag in which you have placed the metal, uh, sorry the pattern and on the pattern you have to um, place the pouring basin and in connection to the pouring basin you have to place the sprue. So what we will do, we will imprint or we will uh, uh, connect this sprue inside the cavity and then we'll replace or then we'll remove it so that uh, a tapered cavity is created on the surface of the wood. Now coming to the answer of that question which is written on the board that the shape of the sprue and the riser are conical. So what happens here you can see that the upper part is having a larger diameter and the lower part is having the smaller diameter and whenever the diameter reduces so the velocity increases so we want the metal to flow quickly inside the surface so that uh, the solidification would not occur whenever the metal is being transferred from this location to that location so we want a quick transfer of the material that's why we want to increase the velocity and in order to increase the velocity we have prepared a conical shape now you would be uh, wondering that if the metal is flown on the surface of that sand cast on the surface of the sand then it would create an impression on this choke and uh, this would uh, rather um, remove the material of the sand or rather it would hinder the surface of sand because of that high velocity and when that high velocity material is flown on the surface of this casting it would also release or it would also remove the particles of the sand so for that situation what we have done we have placed a choke here which is the sprue base on the surface of ending of the sprue now what is this purpose of this choke see you can see whenever the material is flowing with the help of high velocity so the momentum would also be increased so in order to increase the momentum we have increased the time period so here when when this time is increased so what happens the momentum part is being reduced so that this high um, force of the material is reduced and the particles would not hinder so the sand particles would not hinder rather the material would uh, no doubt will flow inside this in gates and ultimately the casting is filled so till now we have learned about the gating system in the gating system the the major component that is yet to be uh, learned is the riser riser i have told you is connected to the final casting and it tells that and how much material is being filled inside that uh, cavity so apart from this the riser has several functions so what are those functions number one it number one it provides additional metal uh, which is required in order to cope up with the shrinkages i have told you that the metal when solidifies uh, create shrinkage so in order to cope up with that shrinkage part the extra material can be taken from the riser second it provides or it permits the escape of air or the mold gases from that mold cavity so from that riser cavity the escape of the gases can be done third it indicates that the mold cavity is filled that we have covered in the uh, initial uh, explanation of the gating system that it tells you that the casting or the cavity is being filled and lastly this casting solidifies under the liquid pressure of the riser 
comparative and that makes it comparatively sound so there is a liquid pressure of the riser and the solidification takes place inside that pressure of the riser so this would make the casting a sound casting so there are certain requirements of an ideal gating system number one the velocity of the molten metal entering the mold should be as low as possible so whenever we are pouring the metal in the pouring basin so what happens we need to keep the velocity as low as possible so as to avoid any sort of erosion of the sand particles in that cavity second we should ensure that the filling of uh, the entire cavity is being done if the entire cavity is not filled with metal so it would lead to the production of a faulty casting then third we should keep a check on uh, the molten metal that the molten metal should not absorb certain gases when whenever it comes in contact with the atmosphere so what happens uh, in order to avoid that contamination of the gases we have to create certain vents on the surface of the sand that uh, is being done before uh, pouring the metal on the surface now that process is called as venting which allows the removal of the extra gases which are produced whenever we pour in the metal inside that cavity so we have to make sure that the metal should not absorb the air or other gases while flowing so whenever we are pouring in the metal we need to ensure that it should not uh, absorb the air or other gases while flowing so with this we come to the end of the second part of the video wherein we learnt the molding process and also the basics of the gating systems which are used in the casting for detailed conceptual clarity you can refer to the book by s chand publishing the link of the book is there in the description box below if you find the video interesting like share subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates thank you all rights reserved this video has been prepared for educational purposes only no part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder